You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone, and welcome to another fun episode of Ask Drone You. I'm your crazy blonde haired mofo, Paul. <laughs> oh, what do you call me? Emphasis on mofo. Yep. I'm just kidding. Yeah, you're welcome, Kyle's daughter. So. <laughs> no cursing on this podcast. <laughs> oh, that's a very clean version. And I'm Rob. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Hope you're having a great day. This is episode number 888. Yes. It's always good. Wow, 888. 888. I feel like that's Love lucky. It. But yes, what are we talking about today, Rob? Because I'm really excited. There's a lot of things going on in the drone universe right now. Lots of big things happening. Yep. And I actually think that there's going to be some bombshells dropped with Amazon this December. No kidding. Yes. In I terms really, of delivery. I think that they have completely uh, surpassed or overcome all drone law so that they can do drone delivery. Very interesting. Mm -hmm. And I know the nitty gritty details, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. Well, since they own the world, I'm surprised they're not delivering already. They don't own the world. I've actually looked at my Amazon <laughs> spending and it's I gone down like significantly <laughs> because I'm tired. Like I had to order the same USB charger three effing times. Freaking yeah, times. I, 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 we've talked about it and we've listened to podcasts on it. You've shown me a couple of those that um, there's too many... They've, they've made it too loose now in terms of sellers, right? Mm -hmm. And so now it's just a portal. It's like, in some respects, one element. It's like eBay, between, Wild Wild West. Yeah, between fake reviews and third-party sellers from mm -hmm. third third or even, other countries, yeah. it's really gone downhill. If you want to check out that show that's uh, on a podcast called Reply All, The Magic Store is the name of the episode. And if you sell on Amazon or you're thinking about selling on Amazon or you have a book on Amazon or you want to create a book through create space on Amazon, you really, really, really need to go listen to that show. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not, I mean, you can certainly do it and be successful, but there's things that you need to be aware of and you definitely would want to diversify. I wouldn't put By all the way, my baskets Amazon in the Amazon. Amazon stock is uh, down from, I think it was like 1228 down to like 11 something. Is that right? Mm -hmm. So like they're all, they're feeling the pain. The pitch. They may be, but they're not going anywhere. No. Kind of like Apple. Anyways. No, but I think today's. I like Apple more though. Me too. They're more consistent. <laughs> Anywho, even though I don't own any Apple, well, that's not true. I guess technically I do. I own Apple stock too, so I'm sorry. Uh, to full disclosure here. I also, well, nope, I do not own any Amazon stock, so no disclosure there. None necessary. Well, today's question I think is a good one because it is going to apply to a lot of you. We've talked in the past about having a good reel and what makes a good reel. And I think Johnny asks this same question sort of question but from a bit of a different perspective and that is specifically how do I get people to respond to the videos that I put out there on a marketing perspective so we're gonna listen to that hey guys this is Johnny I had a, a quick question for you uh, regarding uh, marketing my business I was thinking of creating a video to market to realtors construction workers and roof inspections and I wanted some advice as how I could put a good comprehensive video together that would entice them to either click on my link or give me a call or send me a message. So that's my question for today. Uh, I'm a first time question asker. I love everything you guys are doing. And I have a five year goal uh, for my business. And, and hopefully between one and three years, I'll be able to shake you guys' hands and let you know that I appreciate you guys for giving me the inspiration to start a drone business. Thank you. Thank you, Johnny. That's awesome. And we too look forward to that day when we can shake your hand and congratulate you on the business that you have built. That's really, really cool, really exciting. And we are flattered and honored to be a part of that. Um, so it's a good question, Paul, because I know you've put a lot of videos together in terms of marketing, a reel, et cetera. Have you thought about that specific question what is in this video specifically that is going to get people to respond? And by respond, that doesn't mean respond in a way of, oh, wow, that's really, really cool. But respond in a way that is, I got to get, I got to reach out to that guy because I want to work with that guy. Number one is quality. That's where it's got to start, right? You can't have crap in there and then have some gimmick to get people to call. You've got to have quality stuff in your reel. 
Yes, uh, you do have to have quality stuff in your reel, but I think that if you help showcase the user experience for what they can experience from you, that I think you're going to get a lot more, um, a lot more bites. So, like, I actually talked about this significantly in my marketing class uh, at the Drone You Fly in this last year, and, and went over a total mind map of, you know, how do we create content that helps us bring clients in educate them, give them pre-experience, set expectations, build SEO, and build our website. Um, and I did it, I mean, like, if you were to saw that mind map, I think it's like 40 or 60 layers deep. Like, it's, uh, it's pretty significant. Um, but essentially where we start off with is, number one, who's the audience that we want to go after? And then number two, what's the story that we're going to tell? So, for example, let's say that uh, it's... it's um, Let's say we want to talk about, uh, he said roofing inspections, right? Let's just take that one. So we know with roofing inspections, the reason that a lot of contractors go with Eagle View, which I've actually met three roofing contractors in the last two months because a hailstorm absolutely decimated our roof, ruined two of my expensive suits, and then on and then on. So I've gotten to know a lot of roofing contractors. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately. (laughs) And none of them are quite as cool as David Boggs, for the record. Um, (laughs) uh, But anyway, they all were familiar with Eagle View. And what they liked about Eagle View is that, yes, they had a map of the roof. But what they liked about Eagle View was that they could actually, you know, input their photos or they could actually navigate through the photos. So if they wanted to click on one particular point of the roof, it would say, okay, here's the photo so you can zoom in and check it out. Now, you can just buy Eagle View yourself. Uh, At least that's how I understand it. I could be wrong about that, but in order, so let's let's take a step back. In order to showcase content that's gonna bring customers in, build SEO, and also educate the customers so you have to spend less dedicated time with them, what we need to do is take them through the user experience. So we're going to showcase, you know, like, let's say a storm rolls in, hail comes down on many houses. How do roofing contractors get an idea of the scope of damage? How can we create a more efficient system and process to get the money that these homeowners need to live in a safe home, free of mold, free of water, and free of damage? Check out Johnny's drone solution. Utilizing, and we showcase guys in high-vis vests, flying drones over a house, flying drones, like, but use cinematic effects. I'm sick of people producing really good videos, but they don't show pilots in them. They don't show people doing the job. They don't show deliverables. They don't show how the client engages with the deliverable. They just take it to, look at this really cool thing. They don't showcase, look at this really cool thing. This is how it'll help you. This is why it'll help you. This is how it'll help you on a dollarized amount. This is how you'll get the data, how you interact with the data, and how you make decisions with the data. With as many examples as possible. Exactly. Yeah. But while you're also showcasing that, you've got to use cinematic motion. So like, if I have a drone hovering over a roof taking a picture what I want to do is a very coordinated small half moon turn around the house as I see the drone looking at the roof maybe tilt down a little bit and then I'm going to send that one clip to an animator and say I want you to literally showcase the drone with a laser beam that like scans over the house and we see an outline of each tile as it scans the roof and then you know make sure you put it in 130 frames through this five second clip that's it it's going to cost you $300 maybe more that's a lot for a lot of people but if you really want to draw the visual uh, uh, attention in that's one great example of how to do it Mm -hmm. so we take that and we say you know we can solve problems we can help adjusters get data we can help you know find volumetric um, data of the hole sizes how many holes and overall square foot damage so they can say whether the roof is a total loss or not so then what I would do is in my videos, I would showcase a client, again, nice cinematic pan uh, over the shoulder, looking at a computer screen where my shutter speed and frame rate matches the hertz rate of the screen so you can actually read the freaking screen, okay? These are all really important things. Over the screen, you can see the client, and then we go into the screen. So now it's a screen, like literally a screen share. The client is literally picking points, and he's writing down like, oh, okay, you know, like this point, and he zooms in, we see him zoom in, we see him check it, and then we see him hand a report to his boss, and he's like, 
you know, I can say after like this house, this house, and this house are total losses, 42% are not total losses, would just need blah, 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 blah. I mean, what are the real KPIs that these are looking for? Put them mm-hmm. in that video and how the client's going to interact with that and interact with um, uh, the data itself. And that's now, key performance indicators, by the way. Yeah, sorry, I didn't say that. Thank you very much. That's right. I appreciate that. Um, a term I learned at the UNM Business School. Anyway, um, now, once we have our video, we need to transcribe that video into an article, and we need to ensure that we have one other form of media for that. Let's say a PDF with 10 unique ways drone data can interactively aid roof inspectors uh, during inspections or can aid insurance adjusters or anyone. And then you go through 10 very finite examples, not this, you know, bull about like, oh, we can get such good uh, eyes on the sky and it looks really good. And now I can be like, yes, yes, we need huge repairs over there. No, 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 no. Very specific. Look, I was able to see that there were 63 holes of an approximate size of one and one eighth inch, which showcases that water flow and a water delineation map that I made while I mapped this home would showcase that water would actually flow into the home in all of these spots, potentially causing mold. If we don't take action soon, this could cause essentially mold problems and health and biotoxin related illness problems to the family, taking up the hour claim to a much significantly higher point because of health costs and consequences of not taking care of this claim. I mean, like, go freaking down the line, like, of how this helps because sometimes having a drone for HVAC and roof inspectors is as simple as not putting someone on a ladder because on an average of one out of eight years, someone falls off a ladder and typically it costs the company between one hundred and five hundred thousand dollars and $500,000 for the insurance claim. Another piece of information. Mm -hmm. Why are drones powerful? Use your creative mind, research, and then creatively visualize the problems and the solutions and how the clients interact with those solutions to better... um, tell the story and then take that video, put it on your website with an article on the blog, then launch it on YouTube, then launch it on Facebook, then launch it as many other places as you can to get in, an, you know, increased backlinks. I would then send that article to every association that has to do with roofing and construction and inspections, which is typically three separate industries in your town. Then I would send it to the state level. Then I would send it to the federal level. Link, 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 link. That's what you need to think about. Is this a process? Yes. Like, this is why people hire marketing managers. I mean, Mm -hmm. again, cannot say thank you enough to Kara, our marketing girl, who's a marketing lady. I don't want to degrade her status at all. She's fantastic. She is fantastic. um, And marketing is done right fantastic and it be in the fact that if you take a lot of time up front you create these autonomous systems to bring people in and yeah. i think people really don't understand that about you know a company is a system of systems and that's what we talk about in the business course so as the season slows down coming up you need to be thinking about this what is a piece of content that i can create who is the audience how am i going to tell the story How am I going to then take that story into video form and then from video form transcribe that? By the way, you can just pay someone to transcribe the video, put it in article form, and it'll cost you like $45. Then you create your PDF of like here's 10 ways we help people. And in your article, you say if you want the PDF on 10 ways that this drone can solve this problem, give us your email. Boom, funnel. Then boom, use something like Funnelytics to essentially feed those people into your newsletter and constantly keep them engaged with you. Whew. <laughs> oh, my. All right, I'm back. There, there you go, Johnny. So uh, a couple things. One thing that I'm hearing. So you asked the question and you mentioned various verticals, real estate, construction companies, roofing inspectors. Number one, I'm hearing that you would you don't want to try to combine those into one marketing video. You really no. need to target each one of those separately. Don't try to make one because... If you're, if what are people going to say if they see 60 different things that you do? Like, what does this guy really do? Like how focused can he really be? Is he going to be able to consistently deliver at scale and volume? Right. No, that certainly they're going to say that, or you're going to have a realtor that's watching your video and you're going to be talking about roof inspections there. You're going to lose them in an instant. Right. So no matter how good it is, if you do it exactly like Paul just said, but it's geared towards a roofing inspector and a realtor's watching it, it's all for weight. It's, it's all for naught. 
it's, it's wasted. So definitely want to do something specific to the target that you're going after. And number two, what I hear is that you're really going to have to learn to mix really deep information, helpful data that they that's actionable and that they can see when you, when you tell them throughout your video and at the end of your video, if you want to learn how to do these things, I can help you do that. You're going to have to mix that kind of data and information and that depth with creativity and interesting shots, et cetera, cinematography, yeah. m- merging those two and making it interesting while still giving that detailed information is the challenge. But it's really doable. And when you accomplish that, they'll be calling, we assure you. Agreed. Agreed. And But don't forget the final part of it all. You've got to literally send it to people to get them to read it and click it. It could be... And again, you know, guys, like, for example, like, here's a perfect example of sending someone an email and then sending them a thoughtful, well-rounded, curated email. So, like, for example, on LinkedIn, our Drone You anniversary just came up and I got like 100 emails like, congratulations on your work anniversary. Look, mofo, I don't care that you click three buttons to say congrats. I actually think less of you now, legitimately. <laughs> now, if you would have wrote a one sentence saying it, like, you know, I'm just thinking of you, Paul, and I remember that one time over at Boxing Bear Brewery where we were talking about blah, 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 and you really inspired me. And when I saw your anniversary come up today, I was just thinking, you know what? I hope you have a fantastic freaking day. Now, that person, I'm going to be like, you rock, mofo. I like you. I like you. Let's let's hang out. Let's party. Let's do business. Whatever you want to do, I'm in. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but emphasis on party. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. Are you down? <laughs> Unless we're in Montreal. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, no, no. I, I I mean like take the extra step. So many people in this world just click, 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 and it means nothing, nothing, and it's not going to go anywhere. If you want to make an impression, be thoughtful. Put time into it. It could be 60 seconds, but you know what? That 60 seconds is going to show someone, you know what? I took the time to actually think about and remember who you are, why you're important, and an effect you had on me, and I'm grateful for you right? That says a lot. If you just go click, 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 thanks to your anniversary. I don't care at all. Go home. Like your, tw- your LinkedIn game sucks. Like literally, sorry. But and when you send out these emails with your content, try to make it personable. Try to, you know, if you're nervous and you're like, I don't, I am so afraid to write this email to you. I mean, you literally start out the email to an association you know nothing about, and you say, you know what, guys, I've really been trying to break into this association, and I really want to educate people because I really believe that this can help your clients. It can help them save money, be more efficient and productive. I'm not just trying to sell. I'm just trying to get this information out, and I was deathly afraid to send you this email, and that person's going to read that email and go, why are they afraid to send me this email? Well, and they're going to respond to you instantaneously. Honesty gets you a long way, my friends. It really does. You don't have to put up a guise. You don't have to put up a little veil. Just be you. Be you. Here, here. I love it. Gosh, I'm getting on my so soapbox. True. No, I'm like so true. Fired up for this it's drive called, now. Uh, it's called authenticity. Be authentic. And don't just say it too. Like I have a friend who is very famous. And my respect level for him has dropped like a rock because he says that he's genuine and authentic and that could not be further from the truth. So when like when you say you're authentic and genuine, typically well, you don't have to say it. Exactly. You so, don't. Just be it. Exactly. Sorry. Sorry it, to again go on the soapbox. But to <laughs> my friend who I know is not listening to this show, like just be you, bro. You're a good guy. Just be you. So On that note. Yeah, that's going to do it for us today. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com. Let me know what you think. Leave us a review. I love reading those reviews. And also, if you're getting ready for your Part 107 recency exam, don't forget to check out the Drone U for your recency exam. And I would say, again, once you take our quizzes and whatnot and you get a 90%, just you're ready to go. You're ready to take it. So, um, And in today's day and age, that 107 is increasingly having more and more value. So you definitely want to take the recurrency test, especially after this new law just passed. So check it out, droneu.education. You can try it now for $1. $1 make you holla. Let's see you in the community. <laughs> All right. On that bombshell, my name is Paul. My name is Rob. This is Ask. Drone you.